We've been wargaming now for nearly two and a half months. <laughs> it's a long time. It's one of the things that makes it quite different to other war games. So we're really gearing the army up to fight um, on, on the modern battlefield. We're incorporating the lessons from uh, current and recent uh, campaigns um, and finding a new way to make ourselves the most effective force we can be uh, to defend the UK and its interests. This is very much an exploratory game. It's, it's quick, dirty, aggregated. Uh, and not one of those games that is all about the fine detail of testing a force. This is, this is a way to experiment with ideas, roll a few dice, see what works, discuss why we think that is, change things and then go again. We've brought in lots of expertise and um, experiences that we wouldn't necessarily get from just within DSTL or just within the military. So international collaboration is absolutely critical for our British Armed Forces. We would very rarely go into the situation we're in now that we're wargaming without having our colleagues with us from overseas. It's extremely important to work with our, our UK colleagues. Uh, it helps us to really understand things from a different perspective, uh, really uh, reveals potentially some blind spots uh, that, that we may have in terms of how we think about the future. Uh, and then we'd like to think that uh, maybe occasionally we provide some insights that are useful to them as well. As DSTL, we kind of have the opportunity to, you know, provide you know, feedback on the kind of structures that the Army set out and, you know, give advice that will hopefully help to shape future forces going forward. And um, so, yeah, it's quite important in that regard. Work that we're doing now, the analysis will continue post game execution and looking at force refinement and then retesting, which is an iterative approach to analysis that we, we try to do for force design. So, very important we continue in this vein. This isn't, it doesn't stop now, we just continue.